He sucks at golf, by the way. <laughs> Have y'all ever seen a swing? I haven't. But I oh can my imagine. gosh, it's it's about as bad as him throwing out the first pitch. You've really? probably I've seen, you've that. seen that. I've seen that. Oh that my was gosh! Bad. Yeah. Welcome back to Four Ball. I'm Travis Miller, joined by my lovely co-host Annabelle Angel. Today we have arguably the hottest golfer in live golf, but maybe in the planet, Taylor Gooch won three times this year, um, kind of on a tear. So just thankful for you joining us. We're gonna dive into some stuff. Here at Four Ball, we go over you know your dream foursome. We're gonna dive mm-hmm. into that a little bit. Obviously you're the first player in the group. So we're gonna talk a little bit about you, but just tell us about the state of your game right now. Obviously winning in uh, Valderrama. How do you feel right now going into this new event? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've had a good little run here, and um, you know the the team has played well. Also, Harold has a win as well. So, um, and it's been a it's been a fun last few months, and um, it'd be nice to to end the end the season with another high note or two. So we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. I mean, playing basketball or you know wherever you feel like you're in the zone. I mean, do you feel like you're in the zone right now? I mean, just winning so often this year. Um, Obviously, you're like the king of the, uh, the the wins on the road in other countries. Thought you were going to take down London as well, man. It just kind of seemed like it was in the cards. But, I mean, do you feel like you're in the zone right now? It's like approaching your golf shot just feel different right now than it has in the past? Um, yes and no. You know, we all know in this game, like, the game comes and goes. So, like, you just – I know each week, like, it's, it's just – you don't want to get too cocky, you know. You know that any given week, uh, you can kind of lose your your stride, and so um, you know we're still working our butt off to make sure that we're we're riding this wave as long as we can. You know, it's uh, it like I always say that in this game, the penthouse and the outhouse are always just around the corner from each other. So you know, you never want to get too high, you never want to get too low, but you know, when the when you're on the wave, you want to ride it as long as you can. Yeah. But le- having a certain level of cockiness is good, though, right? Bring that swagger to the table. Yeah, I mean, listen, you can't succeed at a high level in this game unless you believe in yourself, you know? So, uh, you know, when I go out there, I, I think good things are going to happen, and you expect good things to happen. Yeah. I mean, tons of success in live, just uh, in a short history. Obviously, the, the individual championships this year, tons of team victories as well, including this year, last year, team championship with uh, the four aces. Let's talk a little bit about that. So you made the switch um, this year to the Range Goats. Uh, walk us through that decision process and kind of what went into that. Yeah, I mean, um, first and foremost, you know, when whenever Harold joined the league last year and, and, you know, he's one of my best buddies for, you know, going back to early in our college days. And, you know, right before he even got here, we talked about, you know, teaming up and, and you know, if you ever had a chance to in professional sports to go and team up with one of your best buddies, you know you're you're gonna you're gonna jump at that, and obviously to have a chance to to play with Bubba, I mean it was you know something that I, I couldn't pass up, and um, you know I know a lot of people are probably wondering you know why would I leave a team that was winning so much, but um, you know it's it's worked out pretty good so far. They haven't won as much without you. I mean you won five times last year, you've won three times individually. Um, and you're on the way to win the team prize. Yeah, I mean, they've, they're obviously the, still the best team, you know, in the league right now. And so um, it would be nice for the, for the Range Goats for us to kind of, you know, get back in, in the swing of things and uh, overtake the Aces and, and to, you know, end the season with, with team championship. You know, that's, that's the goal. That's what we're working towards every week. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can make it happen. What's the main difference between your two captains, having played for the four aces and now with Bubba as your captain? What's the difference between DJ and Bubba's captaincy style? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would say Bubba's a little bit uh, goofier. Uh, you know, DJ, man, he's just, he's an assassin. Like, he just goes out there and he just handles his business and, and he goes and plays great golf and, you know, he's going to lead by example. He's going to, you know, he's not there to, to you know, chum it up too much. It's it's business, you know. And and Bubba's got a little bit, you know, more of a like I said, a goofy side to him. It's, he's a little bit more playful. Um, but at the same time, too, you know, just as much as DJ, he wants to win, you know. Um, and so it's been cool to kind of get to know Bubba. I didn't know Bubba, you know, too well prior to um, you know joining the team. And so, um, man, it's been been awesome working with him and. 
and you know he's been such a great supporter of my foundation as well and um so yeah it's, it's been a, a a blessing of a of an opportunity and, and a fun fun time so far and you've been with Liv since the very beginning. You were at the inaugural event in London mm -hmm. last year. How has it changed for you throughout this time? Man, it, it was so cool going back to London, you know, this last tournament where it all started um, and to see the growth and, and the progress from, you know, day one to, you know, uh, we, we joke about it though, because it's only 50, I think 51 rounds of, of tournament golf and Liv have been played. So it's, it's still so in its infancy. It's it's um, it's crazy to see how much progress has been made, you know, in such a short time. And um, you know, obviously, the the biggest difference is, you know, from week one, day one, the the field, you know, to have you know guys that have joined along the way has has changed, um, you know, the whole feel of the league. And um, and then obviously this year with you know wearing team gear, you know, everyone. You know, being you know on the same team throughout the whole season, it's um, obviously you know been much more team oriented this year, and and that's been for me that that's been something that's been a lot of fun is you know to, to just the team camaraderie and you know you know tomorrow we're gonna uh, or this afternoon we're gonna go and try to play practice round together and you know just I grew up playing different sports and so I, I love the team aspect of of what live is and um, it's gonna be fun to see it continue to progress. You were a big basketball, not basketball, baseball, sorry. And basketball? Both, yeah. yeah Everything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, we're Americans. We, we love our sports. <laughs> um, and I heard that you had to pick between baseball and golf, right? Mm -hmm. And you chose chose golf. Yeah, my so my dad played uh, pro ball. I have a cousin who played pro ball. Um, my dad has three brothers. And let's, so let's just say baseball was big in our family. And I, I loved baseball. It was, it was you know, growing up, my two favorite sports were baseball and golf. And so um, I came back from a baseball tournament when I was, I think, 13 years old. And uh, the next day I had a golf tournament. And, um, you know, I hadn't touched a club in like a week and a half. And I go play a tournament and I had the shanks. That's and it. so how's that swing translate? Yeah. <laughs> so it was uh, it quickly like set in like, OK, you know, I just came back from a baseball tournament and now I have the shanks and like, I, I didn't like losing. And so I was like, I gotta pick, I can't continue to like let one interfere with the other. And so that's when I decided, all right, you know, when I play good in, in golf, like I usually win in baseball. If I play good, it doesn't matter because I got the rest of the team that I need to like help me win. And, uh, and so my 13 year old self was like, you know what? Let's let's put it all on you so that there's no one else to blame if you don't win. So that's truly the reason why I picked golf. Um, and, you know, my dad was was all for it. He was excited about it. Um, but it was uh, let's just say there were some calls made amongst the family to make sure I wasn't making a, a brash decision, you know. So, yeah. I think it's worked out so far. I think so, yeah. Yeah, you've done well for yourself, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about yourself and what you do off the course. I mean, what kind of hobbies or, or, or things do you get into outside of golf? Oh, man. Um, over the last year, my wife and I have been building a house, so it feels like uh, all of our time has been put towards that. Um, you know, we have a, a two-year-old daughter, and we have another one coming, and so... Um, you know, for, for us, the last year, it's been such a whirlwind uh, with, you know, being a new family and building a house and, um, you know, all the travel. And so, um, dude, when I'm, not, when I'm not golfing, I like to hang. Yeah. I like to watch sports. I like to drink a little bit of wine. I like to, you know, hang with my buddies back home when I get the chance. So, uh, you know, I don't have a bunch of hobbies because, uh, you know, usually... I don't have a bunch of, of downtime, so when I do have downtime, I like to just chill. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. There's one thing that you said there that I want to touch on that you and I have talked about before about a college class that you took. So wine is a hobby of mm -hmm. yours. Yeah. You took a class, it's a wine tasting class yep. in college. I mean, that's I've never heard anybody do something like that before. So you have pretty good fine taste in wine. What's your what's your favorite go-to bottle? Man, it changed. It's 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 kind of the flavor of the month if you will like um right now 
after uh, Australia and Spain, like that's, I'm drinking a bunch of Spanish and Australian wine. When I was, uh, when we were in Adelaide, I did, um, I did a, a day where I went and did just a full wine tasting day in the Barossa Valley, which was like an hour away from Adelaide. And so that's awesome. um, I'm excited to get back home from this trip because I'm going to have uh, some of that wine that's being sent back home. It's going to get there um, after these next couple weeks. So um, yeah, after, after these two weeks, we have, I think, five weeks off. So I think, I think I'll be drinking some Australian, Australian wine for, for those five <laughs> weeks. That's awesome. Yeah. So I mean, the time off with the live schedule, this is really kind of an off season as a new thing for professional golf. And a lot of you guys had some time off between this last season and this season. And, you know, I know you got to spend a lot of time with your daughter, but I mean, how, how important has that been for you just to be able to be at home, be present and, you know, be there for your young kids? Yeah, I mean, I, for for me, that was a, a big decision uh, or a big factor in my decision with Liv was, you know, I know that I'm my best self. I'm my, you know, best golfer, best husband, best father, you know, when, you know, I actually have time away from golf. And so uh, super, super excited for, for another off season. Um, and, and yeah, you know, it's, it's, like I said, we have another, another, baby on the way and and so uh that's that's due in january so those uh november december months are going to be nice to uh you know it's, it's the holiday time for us you know thanksgiving and christmas and getting to spend those times with family and not um you know trying to schedule you know things around holidays and trying to set si time aside for family and friends just knowing i'm going to have that time to you know, do whatever I want and be wherever I want. It's it's uh, something I, I very much look forward to. I want to touch base a little bit on, you know, changing teams a little bit. I know you talked, you said that uh, people might have been like, hey, why are you leaving the four aces with so much success going on? Obviously, your friendships with, with, with Harold and, and moving over. But what was it like approaching Dustin and the team and letting him know and breaking that news to them. I mean, was that a tough conversation? Were they completely blindsided by that? Yeah, that was, that was tough. Cause we, I mean, I mean, there's still some of my you know, best buddies out here. That's, we had so much success together last year. We had so much good times together that it was, uh, it wasn't a fun conversation. It was almost felt like feeling like you're breaking up with, you know, a girlfriend, <laughs> like, you know, it's like, First time I'd ever done it too, so I was like, uh, "How do I do this?" It's not uh, me, it's you. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was tough at the, but at the end of the day, they, you know, they, they respected, you know, the decision. They, they knew why I was making it, you know, and so th they wanted what's best for me, and and I want what's best for them, and um, so like I said, it's it's worked out pretty well so far, and and um, you know, I won't have to uh, go do that break up again this this year which will be which will be nice hopefully that's the only time i ever have to do that yeah it's been pretty cool to see like just the camaraderie not only amongst the, the individual teams but just the league in itself just that first inaugural event in london it was very cool to see guys on the range like warming up together getting advice from people um talking to each other i just hadn't seen that at the professional level in golf um, it's so individual and everyone's focused on themselves as, as they should be a lot's at stake. Um, and you're out there for yourself, but the whole, exp you know, the vibe here is certainly different outside of just it being louder and music and fun. The team environment is just really brings the guys together. So, um, for you, you know, going into maybe a final round, you've had a lot of success this year individually. So maybe this hasn't been the case for you often, but I mean, do you find yourself if you're out of contention, you know, wanting to step up and win for your team. I mean, I think it's so interesting to see that you could be nowhere near the top of the leaderboard, but make such an impact on your team results. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I, I always go back to, I tell a story to people that the most nervous I've ever been on a golf course was Miami last year. Um, in the final round when, you know, we're all playing to go win a team championship. It's the most nervous I've ever been because first of all, that golf course is brutally difficult. And so you're one swing away at any point in time from, you know, a big number and a big number on that day was gonna, you know, put your team out of, out of a chance of winning, you know, winning the whole shebang. And so, um, yeah, I mean, the, the idea of, you know, what you're doing is affecting, you know, not only the three other teammates, but everyone that's on the staff of the team. And, and so it, yeah, it, 
playing for more than just yourself, uh, one, the opportunity is so cool. It's something that is an extra driving factor. Uh, but it's also something that it's just added pressure, you know. Um, you know, it, it looks and might seem like it's, you know, more relaxed out here at times than it is in, in some, you know, some areas. But, I mean, when it comes game time, like I said, on Sunday, that's one of the cool things is, you know, you might not be in the thick of things, but your team needs you. And, and that's part of what I love about team sports, you know. It's on Sundays in the NFL when you, you know, you don't see – a defensive tackle that makes a you know a tackle in the fourth quarter but that could be the difference in you know them winning or losing yeah. a game and in in golf a guy and live a guy might be in 30th going into the last round and you know he might not be you know doing much for his self but you know that final round if he goes and puts up a decent number it could be a difference of his team you know succeeding and and placing or, or not that's and that's what I think is is so so cool out here. Yeah. Well, talking about team play, um, you know, Ryder Cup's coming up. You would be up for uh, consideration for a captain's pick. I mean, what are your thoughts and or expectations going into that process? I mean, started it off by saying that you're one of the hottest golfers on the planet. You won three times this year. Um, you know, do you have expectations going into that? Um, what are your thoughts on? Yeah, you know, um, the, the irony of that, too, is my last round on the PGA Tour was with Zach Johnson at the Colonial. And so um, I know Zach. Uh, I know a lot of the guys, obviously, that are going to be on the team. And so obviously it would be a dream come true to play the Ryder Cup. You know, I, the, I don't have really much expectations for it just because of uh, the, the nature of what's been going on over the last year. Um, you know, I definitely feel like I've I've played well enough to, you know, have that conversation. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't know if they're wanting to, you know, add any more live players than they have to, unfortunately. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. I Like I said, I haven't had any conversations with Zach. Um, I haven't had, you know, any dialogue with anyone about the Ryder Cup. And so, uh, I don't, I don't have high expectations for it, but like I said, it would obviously be a dream come true. Yeah, I mean, you've definitely, uh, I feel like, earned that spot. Plus, you're just playing lights out outside of the United States, so I think that, you know, you could be used in Rome, but, I mean, that's just my opinion. So. Yeah, I like your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your walkout song is Say My Name, Destiny Child. Why did you pick that song? And, um, yeah, why did you pick that song? <laughs> so, we... The, it was first introduced in Adelaide uh, on the watering hole. And so I thought to myself, if there's 30,000 Aussies that are singing Say My Name, like it's going to be the funniest thing of all time. Or also, if 30,000 people are saying Gooch, I mean, that would be pretty funny as well. So I felt like that was like a nice little play, you know, to see what the, what the outcome would be. Did it work? Uh, yes, there was tons and tons of them singing the actual song say my name destiny i'm like i never my wildest dreams could have imagined hearing thirty thousand people singing along with destiny's child while i'm in <laughs> adelaide australia like it was it was hilarious it was great well i like it it's a good song it's good for the girls as well i feel That's like right. there's a lot of boy songs is that we can't assume genders anymore but the <laughs> i'm from oklahoma we still can okay. we're good <laughs> Cancelled. <laughs> <Dollars back. laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit more about what other kinds of music you're into? So I love hip hop. Um, I'm from Oklahoma, like I said, so we, we love our country too. Um, I, I grew up on 50 Cent. That was my dude growing up. Uh, recently, I mean, in the country part, like I love me some Morgan Wallen, uh, like everyone else. Um, let's see, uh, one of my other kind of guys, I actually met him once. My one of my favorite college stories, I met him at a concert. Is Big Sean, big Big Sean guy. Nice. Um, and then currently, I've been banging some some Key Glock lately. That's kind of he he gets <laughs> he, he he gets me he gets, he gets me fired up. Yeah, he gets me going. 
What uh, so if you could add anything to the pl playlist that's playing around the course at Live, and do you enjoy the music playing when you're out there on the course? Oh, it's with the best. Yeah. To play? yeah, and they actually they're way better DJs than me because I, they they get the vibes going. Yeah. yeah, no, they do. I mean, it's great for the fan experience too, just because when you're there, it's there's something going, it makes it feel like it's more upbeat, mm -hmm. and then your time spent on the course is very compact compared mm -hmm. to. You know, regular pro tournament. So, no. Yeah. But I didn't know. Like, just obviously, we'll, we'll throw a speaker on your your cart when you're playing casually. But playing in a tournament round doesn't phase you at all. Mm, no, no, it's great. It actually for us too. I feel like it kind of drowns out some of the noises that could kind of affect us. You know, because um, you know when we're playing in front of you know hundreds of thousands of people, like that dull roar isn't going to mess with you. Uh, but when you get in those areas of the golf course where there's not a lot of fans and there's, you know, you know, 20, 30 fans, you know, right there, it's like now you start to hear the one guy with his hands in his pocket or, you know, someone whispering or whatever. And so in those areas that that music kind of helps like drown out anything that might mess with you. So I think it's actually beneficial, not just like, yeah, we like it and enjoy it, but I think it's beneficial for us, too. It's weird going to other golf events. I'm like, why is no one making any noise? Yeah. It's so quiet. Yeah. yeah then you start talking, you're like, oh, you're supposed to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about it's weird. Like, my caddy last week at the, the British Open, he said that too. Like, we walked onto the range on Monday or Tuesday, whenever it was, and he was like, it's just weird not having noise out here now. You feel like something's missing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny. Have you been to any of the Live Golf concerts? I have. I'm especially excited for the one coming up in Chicago for Tiesto. That's going to be a, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. I feel like they need to have 50 Cent. That's my dream performer. So Oh, I'm in. <laughs> Say less. I'm in. Let's make it happen. I think that's what golf needs is 50 yes, Cent. Absolutely. He sucks at golf, by the way. <laughs> have you ever seen a swing? I haven't, but I can Oh only my imagine. gosh. It's it's about as bad as him throwing out the first pitch. You've really? probably I've seen, you've that. seen that. I've seen that. Oh that my was gosh. Pretty bad. Yeah. It's, it's, his golf swing looks pretty similar to that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, DJ Khaled makes him look like a good golfer, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't we let's talk a little bit about the foundation stuff. Uh, the Taylor Gooch Foundation, yes. Yeah. Which you set up with your wife, mm -hmm. Ali. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what it does and why you started it. Yeah, so um, it was a you know a, a pipe dream for years. My wife and I had talked about. Uh, my wife has an incredibly giving heart, and um, and and she, it's just led me to to want to give back as well. And so um, a few years back, we started a foundation, and um, we I'm from Oklahoma. My wife is from Dallas. We met at Oklahoma State, and so. We wanted to make um, an impact, you know, within Oklahoma, and wanted that to be the focus. And so, um, you know, obviously golf has been such a blessing to me and my family that we were going to continue to focus on golf. We wanted to help give kids an opportunity and and help grow the game within you know the state of Oklahoma uh, at a junior level. And so, uh, we first started supporting the Oklahoma Junior Golf Tour, the OJGT, and um, you know we. That's when I was 10 years old, I, far, I first started playing uh, tournaments on the OJGT. And so for me, you know, the OJGT was an integral part of my development as a junior golfer. And so uh, we've helped support them. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, it will continue to um, help junior golf thrive in Oklahoma. Uh, we just hosted our first AJGA uh, tournament in, in Edmond, Oklahoma, which was I grew up playing the AJGA tour as well as, as a junior golfer. And so uh, it was really cool to, it was just this last week to, to be back home and, um, you know, see all the kids and see all the families and see all these dreams and aspirations from, you know, the next, you know, generation of golfers coming up. And, uh, and then, so we also um, have partnered with two other organizations. One is called Hope is Alive, with, which is a, a rehabilitation group uh, for, for addicts. Uh, it helps families, helps individuals get back on their feet uh, and, and get going. And, you know, it's one of the, the biggest challenges that isn't talked about enough, uh, especially in the United States right now is addiction. It's, it's, it's a serious issue and, and hope is alive has been 
uh, one of the, the leaders uh, across the nation, but especially in, in our state of Oklahoma in, in helping you know, people you know, rehabilitate and, and get back on their feet. And, uh, and then Positive Tomorrows is the other group that we, we have partnered with. Um, so it's a completely homeless, uh, it's an elementary school for homeless kids from six months until they're in sixth grade. Um, any kid that's homeless, they are trying to bring and get them into to school and educate them and feed them and clothe them and bathe them and, and just give them the life essentials. And um, it, it's one of the most incredible um, facilities I've ever been to, to see, like I said, you know, kids from six months into sixth grade that might be living, you know, on a ant's couch or, or living under that freeway or at this homeless center. They, they go and find them they, like I said, they clothe them, they feed them. Um, they, if the parents are still involved, they, they bring the parents in to help them, uh, give them, you know, the essential skills and, and necessities to, um, you know, go and do a job interview, uh, to go and, you know, get help in any way that they can. So it's just, it's an organization that um, it, it's, it's truly moving to actually be there. And like I said, day to day to see the, the work that they're doing with these kids that have no opportunity, have no hope, and they're giving them hope and opportunity to better their lives. And, you know, that's what my wife and I want to continue to focus on is the next generation, the, the youth, the kids that don't have opportunities. How can we, you know, give them, you know, an opportunity to, like I said, better their life, better their family's life, and, and kind of help uplift them. And so we're going to continue to focus on the youth, focus on, um, you know, golf and, um, and yeah, it's going to be fun to see where it goes in the future. That's really incredible. How can the people watching get involved with your foundation? Yeah, uh, we have a social channel, Instagram uh, account, Taylor Gooch Foundation, and then uh, a website, taylorgoochfoundation.org. And um, you can kind of find out everything and how we've, you know, specifically helped these organizations and, um, you know, what we're doing uh, outside of, um, what we just talked about as well. So we have a lot of aspirations and goals in the future and it's gonna be fun to see what we can do. Awesome. Well, shall we get into the Let's four ball? Let's dive right into it. Okay, it. so we have guest number one, Taylor Gooch. Who are you inviting as your second guest? Someone who means a lot to you. Uh, Kelsey Klein, so when I was 10 years old, I was at a junior golf clinic and uh, I met Kelsey Klein. He was about 23, 24 at the time. He had just graduated from uh, the University of Oklahoma, uh, played golf there, professional golfer at the time, um, and we just hit it off. He, he has been like my big brother ever since, and he now actually runs our foundation. Uh, he's the director of the foundation, and um, yeah, he's been, aside from my parents, he's, he's been the most, um, you know, influential person in my life since I was, you know, 10 years old and, and I wouldn't be here today, uh, who I am, you know, the golfer I am, if not for Kelsey Klein. So he's for sure the first one that comes to mind. Nice. What's the vibe like playing with Kelsey out on the course today? Yeah. I mean, he, uh, he's, he's just one of us. Like he's out there with a bucket hat on with the music going, okay. just hanging. He's, uh, he's a good golfer too. I mean, like I said, he, he played some professional golf. He, you know, Monday qualified in some, into some PGA Tour tournaments. Played some mini mini tour golf, and um, yeah, he he, uh, you know, he's he's that guy now because he's probably f mid forties now. So he's he's that guy you don't want to play on his home course because okay. he's probably going to clip you. Okay. Yeah. So he's still got the game. Though. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> no doubt. All right. Well, that's good then. So he brings the vibes. You play when you're playing casually. You play with music and just relax just have a good time oh yeah one the the course i played back home um it's called oak tree national there's no tee times you show up you can you know play six seven guys as long as you're not slowing the pace down music's going there's there's dogs running around so it's uh it's 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 a vibe wow no tee times no so tee times just... you just show and go wow no yeah. Seems ma like madness, but I bet it actually oh, works out perfect. Though. Yeah, yeah, we know what to do. You know, we know <laughs> we know how to like get in line and go play. Like, you get the right, you know, and it's you got to have the right membership. You got to have the right people. But yeah, it's, of course. It's, it's uh, when you do, it's the best. Yeah. Any fun stories of you and Kelsey playing in the past that you could share with us? 
God, let's see. Um, so at this course I was talking about, Oak Tree National, right when I turned pro, um, they had a, a term called the pro scratch. So you have a, a pro and an am played, you know, a two man event. And there was probably 20 teams out there. And it's all, you know, mini tour to PG, PGA tour pros to senior tour pros at the time. And so a bunch of good pros and a bunch of, you gotta be a scratch technically to be the am that's playing. And uh, like I said, I just turned pro. This is a couple months into be, being a professional golfer. And uh, we end up winning the tournament uh, and it was like, you know, five or six grand, which at the time was the biggest check I'd ever made. And then, uh, but the best part was you had um, kind of little money games throughout the, the two days. And, and so it, one of the games is like a skins game. Everyone puts in, it was like, you know, a couple hundred bucks a team. And day one, it was blowing like 30 miles per hour. And tough par three, I hit to a foot from like 220 into the wind, make birdie. And it was our only birdie of the day or sorry, our only skin of the, uh, of that day. And it was us. And yeah. so we won the tournament, but the skin paid more than what the tournament the paid. Yeah. <laughs> so anytime that we, uh, Kelsey and I will talk about, you know, you know, winning 4 million bucks in Valderrama or wherever, <laughs> we're always like, but do you remember when we won the only skin <laughs> and we made like five, it was like 5,500 bucks or something. Yeah. That'll never be topped. <laughs> That's awesome. So we've got yourself, mm -hmm. Kelsey Klein. Mm -hmm. Who are you inviting as your third guest? A person who is a master of their craft. Elon Musk. Absolutely. I mean. Does he play if, golf? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even care. I just give me four and a half, five hours on a golf course with Elon. Hopefully he sucks so I can like make fun of him about not being good at something. And yeah, give me four and a half, five hours to ride around and pick his brain and, and see what the world's gonna look like, you know, on Mars and in a thousand years here. And, you know, we'll just, just chop it up for four and a half, five hours. He's gotta be like the most interesting man in the world. So yeah, give me four and a half, five hours with him and I don't care what his golf's like. See, see if he- Just sit on the buggy. Yeah, yeah. he's so smart. <laughs> yeah, he'll probably yeah, watch you swing from front nine and just like, a, like assess your swing and then on the back nine he's like a scratch golfer i mean the guy's he'll, just like a sponge he'll, of knowledge he'll create like. <laughs> some kind of machine to help me play better golf too absolutely like, guaranteed so yeah, yeah. no yeah. It's, it's, Elon. it's funny to see like he's been on a lot of podcasts and stuff and yeah just, he's obviously super smart with everything he's done with his own businesses but just this wealth of knowledge just in any topic that gets addressed and like his opinion on it and stuff so mm -hmm. it just it would be fun just to soak up what he yeah. has to say for sure but yeah. i wonder if he's ever really picked up clubs or played i feel like he probably hasn't but let's let's introduce him yeah let's do it I'm, I, get I'll, him out here to a pro-am or yeah. something yeah, yeah. Well, let's do a shot of tequila and just get the vibes right let's get it going so with elon musk what is it that you admire most about him obviously he's wildly successful but what stands out the most uh um just his like vision you know it, it like it feels like he's playing chess while everyone's playing checkers you know and he like the way he's able to um communicate extremely complex things and, like break it down so like someone dumb like me can kind of try to understand it like it's it's crazy uh to like to be able to communicate in that way and to just simplify things like there was one time he was talking about like this idea of this like tube that goes you know through la to help with like all the traffic that they deal with and everything he made it seem like i was like okay yeah yeah you can do that and it that sounds easy that, so yeah <laughs> right and it's like the way he explained it which obviously it's like how do you even begin to think of that but he made it seem like it was very possible i'm like this guy is smart yeah yeah well he spent what 40 something billion dollars on twitter uh what last year or so mm -hmm. i mean if you had to spend, if you had 40 something billion dollars to spend, what, what are the top things that you're going to be buying? Me? Yeah, you. Dang. That's, that's a, a great, lot of money. That's a great question. Um, I'd probably buy some time to go hang out with Elon, you know, <laughs> turn that 40 billion into buy some shares in yeah, the Twitter or yeah, yeah. X or whatever it's called now. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, that's a great question, man. I mean, 
You gotta go buy like an island somewhere, right? You gotta yeah. go buy your own island. I mean, that's just an insane amount of money. So it's yeah. like it's kind of a hard question to answer, yeah. really. You know? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't buy Twitter. I would let him buy Twitter. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wouldn't want to mess with that. He's kind of. I wouldn't say he's a big conspiracy guy, but we've heard that you're a little into conspiracies. Are there any conspiracies that that you're into or believe in that you'd want to share with us today? Man, so um, the week after London, we went to Paris, okay? And we went to the Louvre one day. My, my wife, daughter, family, we went there. And I forget what room in the Louvre we saw one of those Sphinx, the, the big cat thing that's like at the pyramids, right? No chance humans made the pyramids. There's zero chance. So that's my, I don't know if I have a conspiracy on that. Uh, I actually do, but that's for another time. But yeah, I'll just say no chance that we thousands of years ago could make those. No chance. Taylor, do you believe that aliens exist and they're on our planet? Um, yes and no. I feel like Elon would know. Yeah, oh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, al aliens for sure made the pyramids. I actually, I mean, I'm a meme guy, obviously. I saw a meme, like, literally yesterday, I believe, uh, flying, that it was, like, these these guys making the pyramids, and then it was someone taking a picture, like, you know, thousands of years later, like, aliens made these or whatever. Like, yeah. Because you know, it is insane to see what they were able to do and how they've stood the test of time. Like, it's, it's, yeah, it's a wild, yeah. 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 I don't know. No chance. No, no chance, chance we all. did it. Like I said, <laughs> aliens did it. Definitely a more advanced civilization. Yes. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's it, architecture in general when you're over in Europe, just seeing everything that was built, you know, thousands of years ago. Oh, it's And insane. you see stuff today that's just built, you're like, okay. Like, this is just insane. But pyramid, it's just out of this world. So, yeah. Have you been to Literally. the pyramids before? No. No? Mm -mm. I've watched all the shows on them, though, so I feel like I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Elon would know, so we'll have to get that out of this yes. person to know. We'll, That'll we'll be actually the first thing on hole number one. I'll be like, all right, we're going to spend the first six holes talking about pyramids. I need to know, because he's for sure got more knowledge than us. If Elon said, Taylor, do you want to come to Mars? Would you go with him? Oh my gosh. Um, when? Like now? No. Can't fit them in Maybe right now. in like 30 <laughs> years when they figure it out more? Yeah. Yeah, I think with yeah. after all the Titanic, uh, visiting the Titanic news and stuff to get yeah. the young family, I don't know if it's probably the best decision yeah. maybe to. Yeah, to go. yeah. I'll, like in 30 <laughs> years when my kids are grown, they don't need me anymore and they've been to Mars a few times. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it then. But I'm not going to be the first one. I mean, if it was a successful landing, though, and everything was good, it'd be pretty cool to say you were one of the first missions yeah. to Mars, right? Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I don't blame you, though, to yeah. pass on that. I'll just be the first to live. Let the others be the first to Mars. Well, talking about money games and skins with Kelsey and stuff like that, I'm sure the money game would be pretty interesting with Elon with, with what he's carrying around. So. I'd, I'd love to play a money game with him. Yeah. I'll, I'll handicap it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, f I wonder how many strokes you'd have to give him. Yeah, not enough. I won't give him enough. <laughs> he can afford to lose a few bucks to me. Absolutely. That might be the biggest purse that you've ever had <laughs> Correct. in a casual round with Elon. Correct. So. <laughs> He'll be too busy talking. There's no, <laughs> there's no time for golf. Yeah, correct. <laughs> I mean, one of the big things popping up right now in social media, obviously, is and just at UFC and so forth, is this potential fight between Elon and uh, Zuckerberg. And Zuckerberg's actually pretty Dude, jacked. Yeah. Like some of these pictures, I'm like, geez, like the last thing you'd think of him is being jacked, but he's he's pretty fit. So yeah. I mean, how do you think uh, that fight would fare? Do you think it's going to happen? Or Golly. Think I, did you see they were talking about doing it at the Coliseum? Yeah, I saw that. Well, the, Col imagine? the Coliseum reached out and said, like, have it. Like, do it here, which is wild. Wild. Uh, I Originally, before seeing some of the stuff of Zuckerberg, I would have said Elon for sure, just on sheer size. Yes. Yeah. But, dude, Zuck's kind of like been in the gym literally like yeah he's fighting like it. so i don't know he, i feel like the fighting is different it's just like if you have some techniques and like if you understand like you got you you're that's a that's a problem so golly i'm just gonna say elon though because that's my guy <laughs> you gotta go with your boy i gotta go with my guy yeah i don't i mean 
who knows, maybe he's been doing some behind the scenes training to get fit because I mean, if he doesn't, like, he's going to get smoked. He's going to get smoked. Yeah, because yeah. I've never actually been in a fight before, but I've heard, like, just throwing a few punches and wrestling. I mean, you get exhausted super fast. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, he's going to have to tap out. Yeah. So, yeah. be interesting. To You've see never that. been in a fight. Never been in a fight. I'm just a have you been level, in a fight? level Yeah, headed. I've been in a fight. Very oh, level. really? Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to hear about this cat fight. <laughs> I had older brothers. Ah, so, um, fair, fair. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the final member of your four ball is a celebrity guest. Um, I'm going to do Mark Wahlberg. Uh, he's got to be one of the coolest dudes alive. Um, Entourage is one of my favorite shows ever. Um, he likes some tequila. He likes some good wine. He likes shoes. Like He likes everything that I like. Um, and he works his butt off, and so it'd be, and he loves golf too. So it's like, I feel like playing golf with him would be fun. I feel like we might go, you know, have some wine afterwards. We might start a new business because he feel, feels like he's in a little bit of everything in this world. So let's, you know, let's go start something new. Um, yeah, and he just seems like one of the dudes. Like he just, he's just one of us. So, yeah, Mark Wahlberg would would round out the foursome for sure. Have you met him before? I haven't actually, no, I haven't. I know that a lot of, you know, a lot of golfers have. I need to get Abe to get me the hookup to play some golf with him sometime. Uh, but yeah, Mark Wahlberg would be, give me a round of golf with him. We'll, we'll have some fun. Might have to have him slow down a little bit though. I mean, I've, the rumors are that he plays like 18 under 90 minutes or something yeah, like that. I yeah. Mean, if you're gonna have Elon there and all that stuff, it's like, hey, buddy, you gotta yeah, play yeah. at our pace this time, right? Yes, correct, <laughs> correct. No, but he's he's what you said earlier <clears throat> about his work ethic. It's insane at, at his age and at his level of wealth and stuff. Like he doesn't have to do that. Like mm. he can just live life pretty smooth at this point. But mm -hmm. he's I think, what is he at the four a.m. club or whatever? He's just working out every single day. Yep. Just setting the tone for his day but then everything he does throughout the day is just through the various businesses that he mm -hmm. owns and then obviously he's still shooting just countless movies and stuff like that it's pretty yeah. impressive to see oh that. it's inspiring like you said he, he, it's like he's not goes non-stop so yeah that'd be maybe i could learn a little bit about that how to how to go non-stop because i don't got that in me well if i feel like i've got to the point where I, if i feel down or i'm overwhelmed like i'll literally just go to mark Wahlberg's instagram page and just be like look what this guy's doing yeah. like i can do it i can get through my average day but this guy's just running all these companies still playing 18 holes of golf doing all this stuff i mean it's crazy 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 so. crazy yeah yeah he's a big wine guy though for sure and mm -hmm. uh, he's working with abe on fletcher so definitely mm -hmm. that, i think that one can can come true here pretty quick so yeah We'll have to make it happen. Yeah. So what's your favorite character in Entourage? Man, uh, I mean, it's the the whole like E being like his, I mean, that's his guy, right? Like he, he kind of sucks at times though. Like Turtle's hilarious. Um, I mean, Ari's the best though. Yeah. Like you couldn't remake Ari nowadays, but he is, easily he might be the best character in all of shows like he is the absolute best so yeah Ari yeah he's I don't know that you could remake Entourage today no. but uh Ari definitely makes the show so have you seen have you, I you still haven't seen, seen it oh I know I live under she a rock we tried to get her to start <laughs> watching Entourage and she still hasn't seen it yet so. oh yeah you need to download some shows it's like it's the easiest watch too because you can just sit there they're like 30 minute episodes you just like knock a few out it's it's the best. I'm one of those people though that can't stop watching. Yeah. Like how many seasons are there? Cause I, I don't want to. Uh, there's like eight, I think. Yeah, and then there's a movie. Eight or something. Yeah. yeah. But it goes quick. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, you got some long fights coming up. Yeah. You got, you got time. I watched the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> you will. So what character would you say you relate to the most yourself? Golly. Uh, I don't, I don't think I relate to any of them really. They're, <laughs> they're so bizarre in their like own ways. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like E is the most like kind of level-headed, like rational, like trying to do, He's make to, the right decisions yeah. and like push things forward. So like, I would say I would relate to him the most because I can't imagine being like Vince. Like, 
He never did. I'm definitely not Ari. Um, definitely not Turtle. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I'd say E would be the closest, but like I said, E kind of, I'm not a huge E. E got a lot of hate because I think the, the boys were just the boys and they were living their life, but he was trying to get them on track yeah, with everything cor- they needed to do. But, correct. But he's just doing his job. He's just doing his job. Yeah. So I, I think this is a good, good four ball. I mean, Wahlberg, I think, would loosen up Elon Musk a little bit too. You yes. know, get him comfortable. And yes. then if there's any business ideas that do come up, you know, Wahlberg would be a part of it. Elon can help fund it. And Imagine the both of them. They they could figure something out. Yeah, and if I you were be if you the were there wall. just to be a fly on the wall or even get a little piece of that, it'd yeah. be pretty good. Yeah, you and Kelsey are just like, hey, this yeah. is falling into our lap right exactly. here. Exactly, so. exactly. <laughs> so I'd say it'd be good. It'd be a good four ball. Yeah, that would be pretty good. So where are you gonna play your four ball? Oh man, Riviera. We're gonna go to L.A. Riv, huh? Yeah. What what makes you decide that? Is that one of your favorite? Stop. One yeah, it's one of my fa- one of my favorite courses. I can guarantee you the weather is going to be good. Um, it's also going to be in one of the best like parts of the world to go get some great food after. We can go basically anywhere in the world from there to start the business after that. <laughs> it's a quick, easy flight anywhere. Uh, but no, and Wahlberg lives nearby, so we can go drink his wine afterwards. Absolutely. Perfect. Got it all lined up. So yeah. awesome. Well, we'll be there to join you. So. All right. <laughs> all right. We just can't bring the cameras. We can't let anyone know what we're what we're working on. That sounds like a good deal. So, <laughs> well, dude, thanks for joining us. Good yeah. luck the rest of the way, and congrats on the news of the the baby coming, and uh, good luck with everything there too off the course. All right. Thank yeah. you all for having me. Good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you. I thank hope you, the range goats you. can make their way up that leaderboard. That's right. And I, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a month. I'll ask you about entourage in a month. Okay, I would have seen it all by next week, don't worry. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you.